Hi there, it's Cindy Hodnett, your host for Behind the Scenes podcast. Of course, we are today still remote, um, and we are pleased to have as our special guest Caroline Hipple, who is um, president of Norwalk Furniture, a longtime a longtime buddy uh, as well. And Caroline, first of all, I want to say thank you for you know taking time to talk with us today and and let people know a little bit about what's going on, um, sort of from the manufacturing side of the industry and and how you guys are adapting. Well, thank you for having me, Cindy. And I think things, you know, communicating is part of weaving together the connections that will get us through this. So I am delighted to be a part of it. So nice to hear your voice. And you as well, you as well. Well, you know, one of the reasons that I really wanted to reach out to you in particular is because, you know, a lot of the retailers and designers never miss Norwalk, whether at High Point Market or Las Vegas Market, because your your window displays in the showroom and your product stories are are just spot on with the influences that we're seeing, you know, in the consumer end of things. So, you know, there's a lot of disruption right now as mm-hmm. as a result of everything. How have you guys adjusted, you know, production at Norwalk and and you know you know, how are you planning your own like return to normal operations it's, right yeah, now? It, it's so interesting, Cindy, to navigate this this pandemic. Um, I'm, I'll never forget talking to Steve Kahan of Regal Furniture at the January Vegas, and he said, "Caroline, my supply, I'm supposed to go to Hanjo next week, and my supplier is saying don't come. That Hanjo is going to be shut down." And I had a flat, uh, just a lightning bolt went through me at that very moment, wow. and I thought this is going to be a big deal. And, you know, and at first I was thinking about supply, which is obviously, but then I started thinking if, if they're shutting down major cities in China, then, you know, this is going to be a big deal. So, but, you know, we, like everyone else, what my last trip was to the design influencers conference Mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And it was just, we were just starting to see that there were a couple incidences in San Francisco. And then I came home, I had a red eye to meet a major customer who I'm so glad got to our plant just before this. And not the next week, we started knowing that we were going to have some issues. And so we started planning what, depending upon what the federal government said, what the state government said, what would be our reaction. And so sure enough, on Sunday the 24th, our governor said we could work until midnight the next day. And so in one day, so we all met on Sunday and then decided our our plans for our employees. And so then, um, but that was before we knew about the CARES Act, before we knew about the PPP Act. So, so we, it was, it's very interesting how you have to respond as things come. Most of our employees are furloughed, but because of the stimuluses, I think they're in good shape mm-hmm. and 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 they're happy. We're all happy, sad to not be together and doing what we do best, which is make beautiful upholstery, but happy to be doing our civic duty to help stem the tide. Yeah. So right after that, and, and, and all, for a long time, we had wanted to use our sewing facilities to be able to help, but we wanted to make sure that we really were doing something that was helpful with someone who needed something from us. And miraculously, the hospitals in the area had discovered a material that they use for sterilizing instruments in the in the OR, and they had plenty supply. And they we learned how to make masks and gowns out of this material, and then we started supplying. Um, it's 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 life extending to the real PPE. It can mm-hmm. be sterilized, and so now we're that's what we're making. We brought our sewers back, our pattern developers. And um, and cutters, and so so we we were able we have been able to help our community um, while you know our our springers and our framers and our upholsterers are are not working now our our cutters and sewers and pattern development people are. It's a phenomenal a phenomenal endeavor I think that you've that you've undertaken there really. Thank you, but I'll tell you it's a gift to us because we're people that make things. 
and mm-hmm. our folks want to make things. And it's like, and they've done it for years and years and years. And so, so far, Tim Halleck, our head of the factories, vice president of manufacturing, for him just to be able to organize a team, Mark Gornick, uh, uh, we have a command team that figured out quickly how to make the patterns, how to cut them on a electric cutter, how to sew them efficiently so we could get a lot out. And to, so that gave them a sense of purpose to be able to help. And I think that's one of the, one of the most important things in change is people want to know the picture, the plan, and their part to play. And mm-hmm. our job as a leader is to help f- paint the picture of what are we doing today? What is the plan? How do we get it done? And what is your part to play? And when people understand that, they can deal with bigger uncertainty more easily. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it sounds like it honestly should be almost a playbook. <laughs> for Well, you know, <laughs> really. <laughs> I've had a few crises and changes in my career to lead. So it's not, it's not the first time I've had to use that, but I, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing about being resilient and being able to, you know, see good things out of tough things is you do learn how to help the human side of it get through it, you mm-hmm. know, and that's my job. Our jobs is to make this environment safe for our folks, make, we, you know, our first decision making is always the health and welfare of our team here. And, mm-hmm. you know, if we, should we shut down now? Do we wait till the governor says shut down? When can we reopen? So uh, the first thing we say is how does this affect our employees, health and welfare? And once we make that decision, then we then we go out and we say, how does this affect our customers, their health and welfare? And so it's our in our community, our vendors. So we're always thinking sort of in this 360, how does this affect our vendors? How does it affect our employees? How does it affect our customers? And those in our we have this command team of different parts of our company that meet every day and say either virtually or or we have we have a few of us here that are the go forward team and mm-hmm. say, okay, if we reopen for example, Governor DeWine in Ohio says that he's going to that that the stay home order is going to expire on May first. We'll see if that happens. You know, we'll, you know, he will make those decisions probably next week. And but we're planning if they do lift how do we come back? We plan to come back in full. We, one of the things we did early because of that first knowledge I had about Hanjo is I started getting in goods fabric here so we could produce for a long time. And mm-hmm. so we have plenty of supplies here. So when we do reopen, we can be at full production. Oh, so wow. those are the things you have to think about. You have to think about what, what is are my customers open? Are the retailers open? Can they receive goods? Do they want to receive goods? And then do I have the materials with which to make the goods? So mm-hmm. we could control getting the materials here early. So we really worked hard on that. Of course, you're wearing manufacturer's hat now, but you do you were a retailer as well for a long time. So I think you can really speak very, very knowledgeably about both sides of the business if you are one of those manufacturers that didn't see this coming, you know, the, the tsunami coming, Mm -hmm. you know, with your voice of experience in the industry, what would you say to those folks maybe as the, the sort of maybe top two or three things that they, they really should be thinking about right now? Well, I think customer intimacy is one thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are in a great time where you can zoom, you can, pick up the phone. You can use social media. And really, we set out to define who our core customers were, what they needed from us. And we set out a strategy to stay in good contact and really use this time as learning and growing together and business planning. And, you know, first, of course, empathy, certainly trying to understand what's going on with them, but then really get a little more granular with data that can help them make a good business decision and 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 then in in small groups sharing with other retailers like themselves you know there are some wonderful share groups out there and mm-hmm. so but we did it and we are doing it in a much more casual way 
and um, we are learning a lot, and we're sharing a lot, and we're helping. I keep going back to when you can't control the big thing. I mean, we, you and I cannot make that coronavirus go away yet. You and I mm-hmm. cannot get enough tests out there. You and I cannot get an antidote. But, but what we can do is decide how we can make the most of this time, even though it's awful, recognizing it's terrible and lots of awful things are going to happen. But what, are, what can we do that's good now? Mm-hmm. And and then set out to do that. And so what I encourage people to do is meet, talk to your customers, get to know them in this new way, show empathy. And then I, I guarantee you will learn something that will help you on the other side. So there's this interim time that we're using. And then there's this <laughs> endless planning for Will we have a Vegas market? Will we have a high point market? Will we have a Atlanta market? Will we, you know, and so I was just on, on, I'm, I'm on a board with um, one of your folks at IMC <laughs> and, and bless his heart. I'm sure everybody wanted to know what he thought about it, but, um, but the idea is until you know, otherwise you plan for a great high point. Until you know otherwise, you plan for a great Las Vegas. Because if you're not planning for that and you have it, you're going to be sad. And so then you say, B, what if there isn't? What do we do? And what's mm-hmm. your plan there? And then C is, you know, what's next? So I think really having the discipline with your team to say A, B, C plans gives people a sense of control over an uncontrollable environment. Let's go to the other side of the road, really. Let's talk about, like, if you were a retailer mm-hmm. right now in this mm-hmm. environment, what what would you be doing as a retailer, you know, realizing that that it may be as, as quick as 24 hours? <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly, that you have to open back up. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm taking my news in the morning and at night. I am not streaming it all the time because I think that would drive anybody crazy because, yes, you know, you don't need all that drama. You want what you want to know is what is the federal government saying right now? What is your state government saying right now? And what are the pundits in the industry saying? Mm-hmm. And And then how does that affect your business? So as a retailer, you really need to think about cleanliness. You need to think about trust. You need to think about ways that when you do open those doors, people will feel safe coming into your space. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. But before that opening up, one of the things we're doing with our share groups is passing along best practices. And we're learning so many cool things. You know, I am a secret retailer at heart. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, I'd love to be doing that. I'd love to be doing that. And, you know, whether they're doing – Special promotions on social media, whether they have designers doing room plans from home and and using technology, you know, there's lots of really creative stuff happening from the independent and large retailers that keep the um, keep the energy positive, not being too mercenary, but just you know making it lighter or funner or solution oriented, mm-hmm. and. You know, I think one of the things I know from managing through hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes, and I've been through all of them, running lots of retail stores during all of them, what happens is people then, you know, the home becomes even more important, maybe because it's had a shake, maybe because it's right now, it's your sanctuary. So Mm -hmm. you're sitting inside that sanctuary day in and day out with more of your family than you've ever had close to you. And and that's a blessing. Sometimes it drives everybody crazy, but it's a <laughs> blessing. But you're looking at your couch that's worn out and you're thinking, I've got to change that couch. And that really does happen. And I'm not being mercenary, but I do oh, think that people are looking at their homes in different ways than as the, you know, the hall and the hotel. Instead, it's, I live here. How do I make this comfortable cozy, healthy, you know, there, these are going to be some of the buzzwords, you know, wellness within your walls. Um, right. And, you know, and something that's beautiful, raises your spirits, well designed. So all of those things are things that we can key into as retailers to say, I'm going to have a wellness seminar online. I'm going to, you know, do room planning for 
you know, five cozy ways you can redo this room. Uh, you know, some of these things are things that what you want to do is be the person that stands out in your customer's mind on the other side of this. Who was there for me? Who was reaching out? Who was giving me some solutions? Who was making me feel good? You can control that as a retailer through your outreach. And and I think, you know, one of the things, uh, and you alluded to a few of them, it, it's fascinating really to think about what what the consumer market does look like on mm-hmm. the other side. And I think you're right, health and wellness, even, even um, we're hearing in some circles sort of stemming more from even the fashion industry that sustainability is going to pick mm-hmm. up a bit, mm-hmm. um, you know, people looking at entertaining at home. So, you know, those sorts of accoutrements are maybe going to be more, um, more focused. As, I think you're right. Dining rooms is going to have a new purpose. I think, and they, I you know, it's so been too. sort of the, the, you know, the shoved to the side for a little while, but I'm not sure. I think now because people will be used to entertaining at home, and having their family there. I think, you know, it's still a little too hard to say what the mm-hmm. macro thing is going to do to right. us. But you, again, you can't control the macro, but you can control your response in it, which is outreach, understanding what people need and how they feel, and then being helpful in solving some problem. Yeah. yeah. And, I, you know, how I think that's, you know, again, there there are so many things happening at one time right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it, mm-hmm. it's making everybody's head spin, you know. So I'll ask really kind of a two part question. You know, first of all, how how do you really start your navigation with all of the all of the information that's coming at you. I mean, are you sort of revising your strategy <laughs> almost on a mm-hmm. daily basis yep. at that yes. point? Yeah, yeah, you are. Have you experienced also, I guess, maybe any sort of aha moments, whether professionally or personally, and and kind of adapted strategies and best practices to that? You know, it's I'm I'm get you know we've been in the whirlwind a little bit, and so it's not totally settled, but Mm -hmm. I'll use a metaphor. Now, I I was just in Venice at the end of November, right before the Aqua Alta, and now this. It's like unbelievable. (laughs) And But now I'm seeing dolphins in the canals in Venice, and those canals are so clear because there just isn't a lot of traffic. So I think in all of our lives, the silt is going to settle in the water, and then we're going to have some real clarity. Personally, professionally, this time is going to make us really re-examine who we are as businesses, who we are as people, and what's really important to us. And I think caring is going to come out of this. I, I don't know how to explain, but I know personally, I'm, I'm going to have a cocktail webinar with my Venetian traveling friends tonight. You know, everybody's, is that so fabulous? The Lagoon 8, we call ourselves. And, um, <laughs> And and before that, I'm having a happy hour Zoom with all of the sales reps from Norwalk at four o'clock. So nice. um, yes, I'm having a little Aperol in the afternoon. Um, I love it. <laughs> I know, it's really. But but the, but there, this please reach out is happening. My godchildren call me. My high school friends and I have been communicating. We we are very good friends, but we but everybody feels this need with family and with friends to connect. And that's so interesting to me, really interesting. And I think that also relates to retail and manufacturing is, and, and, I, and I really believe we're going to come out of this knowing not to be afraid of technology, social media, and mm-hmm. online activity, but to embrace it with our skills. And I've, you know, I've long been an advocate that retailers need to harness the utility of online sales and make it work with their in-person experience and their design experience. And we're going to figure this out, how it's not a fear factor, but an aid. And that's one reason we are launching. um, We've been, we started, I guess maybe six months or a year ago, and, and it's going to be an 18 month project from here out. 
of really revamping our own online experience and our in our um, mobile experience, and we're adding in visualization tools. We we sell a lot of sectionals, a lot of variations, which means you change the arms, you change the legs, you change mm-hmm. the back. They're very complicated but very popular. We're creating tools, and we'll launch the app next weekend where you can really see, you can change that arm. If you can, it'll let you. If you can, it won't let you. And you can change the leg. And by the end of your playing with this, you see it visually, you see it 3D, you see it draped in your fabric of choice. Then it writes the order for you. So it takes the fear out of doing this virtually. And so designers and retailers, our customers, can use this with their customers to really reduce the fear factor of ordering a complicated custom piece. So these are the things that we're trying to do to move the desirability forward of pairing an in-store experience, which I still think is critical, with the tools that online give you, and then with a manufacturer like us that wants to support that. So we're Uh, super excited about that. That is. It's customization with a click. I love it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Arm chair design. And the the uh, the the um, our partner who's really doing the technical work wants to train retailers to mm. use it. Their retailers are not their customers, but they one of the reasons we loved partnering with them is that um, they will go to our retailers if they want to white label it and make it theirs. And so we're just trying to figure out ways that we can reduce the fear in using technology and online, because I think we're all going to get there, everybody. Yeah. Well, one thing I want to mention um, just before we wrap up is that um, for those who, those of our audience that go to actually our YouTube version of the podcast, will be able to see some of your product that's, um, you know, that you want to highlight now and, and moving forward. Um, but, you know, given, given that, what, what would you like to say to your customers right now? I mean, what final words, final words of wisdom or just final thoughts? words. It will be all right. If it's not all right, it will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, it's not the end. And that's John Lennon, <laughs> but, yes. but not me. But I, but I know, I, I know every one of my hardships has ended up being a blessing in my business life. And I know we're, we're, this will take us some time to figure our way through this, but we are a, a a country of 350 million people. We, there are people that need our products and our services, and we will find our way through this together. And, but it is together. It's be good to your vendors, be good to your customers, create your community, and then go hard at what your vision is. And you will survive and um, and thrive. I mean, I think mm-hmm. I think we will thrive. And it's not going to feel good, but in that not feeling good, you'll find something that feels really great. And that's I really believe that. So, and I that's hope lovely. everyone is safe and well. <laughs> that is lovely. I can I can think of no better words to, to wrap up on. And um, Caroline, you know, again, thank you so much for you know, for being part of this and sharing your perspective. Um, We look forward to seeing what's coming next from Norwalk. Um, And I'm telling everyone we're talking to on these podcasts, I cannot wait to see you again in person. Uh, Me too. I can't wait for a hug, a real Uh, hug. It it will be there soon. It will be there soon. Well, you stay safe and well, and we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks again. All right. Bye. Bye.